Okay, welcome back. I am uh, here this morning to describe for you guys a couple of things that I think might help with the moon observation project. Now, I, uh, I'm looking at the Earth from the direction of the Sun using the Celestia software that I pointed out in the last video. This is showing the current time, which is 5.11 Central Daylight Time. I'm in Topeka, Kansas on my way to Colorado. And uh, so it's actually 6 a.m., I guess, Indiana time. But uh, at this moment, the point of the Earth facing the sun is somewhere in sort of Central Africa. So it's local noon at that place on the Earth. Now, the Earth rotates in a counterclockwise direction when viewed from above. So let's go ahead and view the Earth from above. So I'm going to tip the thing like this. And we'll get it in an above kind of orientation. <clears throat> okay. Now, uh, notice that uh, Florida is here. This is the United States. Indiana is going to be somewhere here. So it's, it's getting ready to be sunrise in Indiana. Notice that since Earth, so the Earth rotates in a counterclockwise direction, this part of the Earth is about to rotate into the Sun. This part over here, which is now currently in the sunlight, is about to rotate out of the sunlight. So this is sunset over here. This is sunrise. Local midnight is somewhere in the Pacific Ocean. And local noon is somewhere in Africa. Okay, so that's kind of how it works. Let's uh, speed up the time a little bit. You can see how that happens. So now I'm simulating the future. This has not yet happened, but you can kind of get the sense of how the thing looks. Now if I zoom out, <clears throat> you'll notice the moon has advanced a little bit since uh, I think it was Saturday or Sunday. I, I, I'm not sure exactly when I did the last video. It might have been Saturday. The moon was back here, but in the intervening time it's advanced to this location. I'm going to stop this guy for a moment. Okay, I've reoriented things back to where we were. We're now facing the Earth from the Sun. And what I want to do is look at the Moon. So the easiest way to change the object I'm looking at in Celestia is to simply hit the Return key, type in the name of the object, and then hit Enter. That looks it up in a database of objects. Now if I say uh, G, that then goes to the Moon shows me what it looks like. If I zoom back, I can see that this is roughly from the perspective of the Earth. And you can see that the Moon has advanced from where it was last week. It used to be back here on Saturday. This is Tuesday morning. Now it's gotten to here. And if I turn the time on and let it go a little bit, let's uh, look at it from the perspective also. Get the Sun in there so you can see how the Sun orientation fits into this picture. Okay, so if I turn on the time, let's let it go a little bit. And uh, actually, let me zoom in on the Earth. You can see that if I have turned the time up, now the Earth is spinning rather quickly. Days are going by in seconds now. And now we can see the Moon marching across. Let's go ahead and follow the moon again. And you can see that the moon is becoming new in the sense that relative to the earth, it's passing between the earth and the sun. Not exactly, but um, we're not getting a solar eclipse, but the back side of the moon is now illuminated. I'm stopping the time now. You can see the back side of the moon is illuminated, and it's a new moon. Okay? So, it's not new. It isn't that it's not getting sunlight. It definitely is, because if you look at it from above, you can see that it's fully illuminated from the other side. It's just that from the position of the Earth, it appears to have no reflected sunlight, and that's simply because the moon is uh, between the Earth and the sun. So, 
That's the idea. And then the point is, of course, also, uh, the moon and the sun are going to rise together. So the, the moon will be in the east at sunrise when it's new. But if you go back, let's see, let me turn the time around, go backwards. Um, if you go back to this weekend, it's right about there, boom, okay, and then we look at the thing, let's see, hang on, now you can see this is, uh, it's kind of hard to manipulate here, okay. It's like I've gone a little bit too far. Let me. Right about there. Okay. Now we're back to where we were. And the moon is now a waning crescent again. Also, notice that at sunrise, the moon is uh, not quite to zenith. At sunrise, zenith is straight up above my head, that's where I look straight up in the sky, the moon is not quite there yet. So at new, the moon rises at sunrise. At third quarter, the moon is at the zenith at sunrise. At full, let's see, let's go back to full here. When the moon is full, that means it's back here. Right about what? Something like there, maybe? Oh, I went too far. Right about there, okay. Um, then, at sunrise, the moon is setting. At sunset, the moon is rising, and so on, when the moon is full. Anyway, I hope that gives you an idea how you can use Celestia to see how this stuff works. Ah, okay. <laughs> we'll see you guys soon. Something else I realized I had never gotten a chance to show you guys had to do with the Cengage Now study guides, and I want to just take a moment to describe what that's about, because a substantial part of your grade deals with these study guides, and I don't want to have any uh, ambiguity about that. So let's go ahead and log in to the Cengage site. There we go, and uh, I'm going to switch to the student view, so it looks like what it looks like when you guys go in. Okay, so you should see something like this. If I go to assignments, I already talked about the reading assignments, but the study guide's a little different. Let's take a study guide. I'll stay. start the assignment. And the idea is uh, you take a pretest. Well, first you read the, do the reading assignment, read the chapter, get what you can from it, and then you take a pretest. And the pretest is basically a series of questions. Let's see, I'll do one here to give you an idea. So the question is consider the Earth Moon system, the solar system, the galaxy, and the universe, which has the least empty space relative to the size of the objects in it the objects it is made of. So I guess um, probably the Earth-Moon system has the least empty space. Let's see if that's right. Oh, I don't find out if it's right or not. But the, the point is you go and answer all the questions and then um, when you're done you say end the pretest. So um, I'm going to go ahead and end it. Now of course you don't want to end it after only one question because as you can see um, I only got one question right out of ten, so I didn't do very well. But one nice thing is uh, I can look and learn about the thing, and it tells me if it's correct or not, or if it's incorrect. It might give me a hint about what the problem is. But the point is, once I finish the pretest, then I have uh, a sampling of what I understand and what I don't understand, and the study guide will help me identify those things that I need to work on and give me resources that I can use to improve. The post-test or the pre-test doesn't affect your grade at all, 
but the post-test does. When you take the post-test, that will be scored and recorded for a grade. But here's the good news. You can do the whole thing again. You can do it uh, a crazy number of times. I think 10 times or something. So you can keep working on the material until you can uh, really master it. That's the idea. So uh, that's all I have for now. Talk to you guys soon.